Hey there, and welcome back to Mutant Year Zero. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Iron Mutant playthrough of the Seed of Evil DLC. In the last episode, we started our search for the renegade stalker Goran, but before finding him, we first met someone else, namely the moose stalker Big Khan. Big Khan has now joined our crew and has proven himself to be useful, and I'm sure the residents of the Ark will have a few thoughts on his recruitment as well, so let's start things off here today with a quick tour through the Ark before we get going. Hey, stalkers! Heard you ran into Big Khan in the zone. <laughs> he loves his conspiracy theories, doesn't he? I wouldn't put much trust in him. He's been out in the zone too long and his brain turned to mush. And while we're here, we can also dismantle Big Khan's Rambino. At this point in the game, we no longer need it. Until next time. And that's it. One down, three more to go. Hello. I hear the legendary stalker Big Khan has returned to the Ark. Big Khan who defeated the Zonates of Attila. Big Khan who traveled to the Pyramid of Tsar, the old Janko tree, the Crystal River. Quick wants me to inform Big Khan that he is a piece of shit and has an outstanding markup with interest that should be paid immediately. Good luck in the zone. I hope you die so I can heal you. And up next, let's hear what Iridia has to say about Big Khan. Well, well. Big Khan is not only alive, he's as handsome as ever. Quite the moose, isn't he? We were stalkers together. Shame what happened, blaming himself for the death of his team, banishing himself to wander the zone in penance. He should realize people hurt the ones they love all the time. That's how the zone works, doesn't it? Until next time. And finally, the man who runs the place, the current elder Prip. Big Khan's alive? And he's back? That sad antler head's got some noise coming back here. You know he accidentally killed his team of stalkers, right? Well, he felt real bad and banished himself from the Ark, disappeared into the zone, trying to atone for his sins or something. Guy still owes me an outstanding bar tab, but that's another story. Keep that moose in line, stalkers! Later, stalkers. Trust no one, okay? It's getting weird around here. Right, so it looks like Big Khan has a bit of a troubled past, perhaps something that we will explore a bit further in the future, but maybe not today, as we are sending out a squad of Selma, Pharaoh and Ducks. With Ducks, we also have the Stalking Death Mutation equipped, which we will use in just a moment to unlock another achievement. And for that achievement, we are today returning to the High Road, where Prip has informed us of a small side quest to take care of, and considering the description here on the left, this one should not be too difficult. Now, as soon as we arrive, we can start collecting some of the new loot that has spawned in the area. And yes, the entire map of the High Road is of course much larger than the area that we are currently exploring, but this here is the section where the side quest takes place, and therefore also the only section that has been updated. And among those changes are of course more enemies, starting with a lone zone dog over here, that should not be too much of a problem. All we need to get the kill are two silent critical hits. And with Ducks delivering critical number one, Selma can go for the regular hit. And Pharaoh can then finish the job. Say my name, Jizzwipe. It's Pharaoh. Yeah, woo! Move that. So let's continue, grab some loot, and meet more enemies. Out, you mongrels. The hunt is Everything out there is food. So it seems like we have some enemies waiting for us by that collapsed cabin over on the left side here, but unfortunately those have to wait just a little while longer before we engage them. Instead, our next target is yet another zone dog, this one also patrolling all on its own, and therefore the ideal victim for another stealthy ambush. Does that hurt? Up next we once again have Selma, for whom the critical is not necessary, still she has to move a bit to get that guaranteed hit chance. 
with that, another zone dog is ready for the kill. Give up now and I'll go easy on ya. Sweet! Right, that is two enemies down. Let's continue our tour. Regroup. All in all, the area here is rather small and therefore doesn't hold too many enemies. As a matter of fact, we only have one more zone dog left before we then engage in the final firefight of this small side mission. And this one is also stationary, so we don't have to carefully navigate around its detection radius. Instead, we can simply sneak up and launch another ambush. And I don't think I have to say much here, two crits will seal the deal. That had to hurt. And once again, Selma has to move up a bit to get into that 100% range. So there we are, we have just leveled up and we are about to enter the final fight of this small side mission. Yes, only one more fight, despite the fact that we still have three enemies left. Three enemies that we could in theory also take out one after the other. However, during this fight we are looking to unlock the vampire achievement. And for that one we need to use Dux's stalking death mutation to kill three enemies in a row while he is invisible. And that invisibility only lasts as long as combat lasts, so unfortunately we cannot exit and enter combat between enemies. Luckily though, we have the right crew for that not to be a problem. At the moment, we are only waiting for the right moment to engage, which happens as soon as the shaman is right next to the medbot on the right side here. And there we go, let's kick things off with a tree caster from Selma here, rooting all enemies in place and disabling them for two turns. And following that, we want to use our tried and tested Wings of the Sniper Gunslinger combination with none other than Pharaoh. That's right. That brings us to Dux, who can now go invisible, and who is also still in range to take out the Hunter here. With Selma we can then actually skip the rest of the turn and do the same thing with both her and Pharaoh on the next one. From here on out we're finishing this fight with only Dux, who remains invisible as long as he kills. And with that we need only one more kill to unlock the achievement and finish the fight. Hey. Follow me. And just like that, the high road has once again been cleared, which now allows us to collect the last few bits of loot in the area, including a very intriguing weapons chest. Let's get this open. Right, inside of here we find the rather harmless looking GJP X93, but this thing can actually be pretty damn useful, because it shoots EMP bullets. And as you can imagine, that is a potential game changer in fights against robots, of which this DLC also has a few waiting for us. Speaking of which, our business here on the high road is now completed for today, so let's continue with the Hall of Electric Coffins that we discovered in the last episode, another one of those entirely optional areas, but certainly one that we do not want to miss. Before we get going though, we have to make a few changes to our squad. And to get us started, Dux, achievement now unlocked, will take a seat in favor of Big Khan. And while we have him here, we also want to make sure to have Flame Puke equipped, as that mutation will come in handy very, very soon. We are not done yet though, as we are also replacing Selma, and she takes a break for the long-awaited return of Magnus. And let's give him the Borg Band here for a bit of extra mobility, he might have a use for that. Now Magnus has not made an appearance yet in the Seed of Evil DLC and as such we have some leveling up to do. Three mutations want to be upgraded, starting with Telekinesis Shield, which now not only has a chance to pull bullets out of the air, but actually has a chance of reflecting them back at the attacker. The upgrade for Puppeteer meanwhile is rather straightforward, spending another three points here just increases the mind control duration from two turns to three turns. Finally then we have Chain Lightning, which can be upgraded to Super Chain Lightning, while the description actually stays the same, so at this point it's not really clear what the upgrade does. 
I don't think I'm spoiling anything though when I'm saying that it improves the ability's damage output, something that we will actually see for ourselves in just a moment, as Chain Lightning is the main reason why Magnus is with us on this mission in the first place. You guys know Mimer. Big tribe of angels. People say they're watching us from the heavens. Looks like they left some war machines behind. Like a lot of them. These machines are riddled with bullet holes. Maybe Mimer was at war with another tribe. Right, so it looks like before we engage our first enemies here, we have another side mission to take a look at, and this one takes place at the Sea Titans. The description on the left also hints at the fact that we will be facing a lot of robots, but we'll worry about that some other time. For now, let's clear out this area. We are facing two enemies this time who do not move whatsoever, which makes another Wings of the Sniper Gunslinger combination a great way to start the fight. Give up now and I'll go easy on you. Yes! Following that, we can now use Magnus's Chain Lightning to do seven points of damage to both attackers. And that leaves them both at only nine hit points, enough for Big Khan to move up and take them out with a well-placed Flame Puke. At this point, we have gained another level up and we actually want to use that, first of all to unlock the Frog Legs mutation for Big Khan, and because we have enough points to do so, we might as well upgrade that to Iron Legs straight away. With Magnus, meanwhile, we have enough points to unlock the final health booster stat upgrade, and with that, his skill tree is fully maxed out. And so we can return to the action now, collect some loot and meet a few more enemies. Listen to your warlock twitch finger. The enemy takes your body for food then walks and talks in your skin. It's almost happened to me. But now we have weapons to fight this enemy. We will burn this arm to ashes before giving in. Behold in this convoy, the weapons of the ancients. Look at my new weapon here. I call it the Stalker Smasher. And we call this a well-timed ambush, as the Matbot here can now eat two quick sneak attack criticals. Right. Good of cover, dumbass. And because Chain Lightning is a bit more powerful against robots, Magnus will be the one to finish the fight. Now, unfortunately, that already concludes Magnus's brief stint with us here today. For what comes next, we need ducks back in the squad. And not only that, we specifically need ducks to have the Eagle Eye mutation equipped, a very rare change from his usual silent assassin. But those extra 25% to his weapon range are extremely important for one of the next fights. In the meantime, we have also collected another artifact, and of course, our stalkers have a few thoughts about it. What do we have here? Ancients make engraven images of themselves. Now, at this point, we are climbing up onto the roof here, but we are not engaging Scrablot Twitchfinger just yet. Instead, the goal here is to take out the Pyro on the left side of the roof, which not only makes the fight against Twitchfinger later a little easier, but actually also improves our chances against a few more enemies down on the other side of the map. It does take a moment until everyone is in position though, but as soon as we launch the ambush here, the pyro does not stand a chance. You don't know who you're messing with. What do you think about that? Right, so at this point we need to make another small squad member change, and we are bringing in the only stalker who has not yet made an appearance in this video, and his name is Borman. Very importantly, we also want to squeeze by on the roof here to grab the medkit from the fallen pyro. Get your asses over here. 
otherwise we would need to remember to pick it up later. What do we have here? And what we have here is a pretty damn powerful piece of gear, as the herpes mask here gives a whopping 100% critical hit chance bonus when its wearer is hidden. In other words, put this on, go into hiding and a critical hit is guaranteed, which interestingly enough is actually already the case for Big Khan, Pharaoh and Ducks, so this thing makes particular sense for someone like Bormin for example, who I believe is the only stalker with no abilities that give any bonus to his critical hit chance. Stalkers, twat finger. We're fighting an enemy we don't understand. We can't win. We should run. Ghouls never run. He said we have the ancient's weapons. Look. Twat finger has his stalker smasher. But what do we get? A bunch of bot stoppers. What's a bot stopper gonna do against a tree? Oh, so we're like screwed now. I don't like being screwed, bubble. Now, as soon as this conversation ends, we want to ambush, because otherwise these two will actually start moving away from each other. A flame puke then gets things going, and because these are just two harmless marauders, another Wings of the Sniper Gunslinger combination is already enough to finish the fight. Give up now. I am the beautiful... But that's how we do it. This way. So there we go, two more enemies taken out and silently at that, which now brings us to the tank and the reason why we took out that pyro earlier. You see, for this tank we are going to use our loud weapons, and had we not eliminated the pyro earlier they would now be able to hear that. Scrap Lord Twitchfinger meanwhile is just a few tiles further away from the action, so conveniently enough he will not actually hear anything. And so we can now take our time and place everyone into cover on the roof here. This gives us a lovely aim bonus and ensures that everyone stays hidden. And as soon as the tank comes back out into the open, we can unload. Now the first shot here will go to Pharaoh. For shot number two, Big Khan can do the honors. To the bone, baby. And finally, it looks like we have to move just a bit with Borman here, but thanks to the high ground he still remains hidden, and even if he didn't, a regular hit would be enough. Sleep it off. You got got. Get over here. And with that, we only have two more enemies left on this map, and for these two we have something a little bit more elaborate planned. As you may have seen earlier, Scraplot Twitchfinger is standing on a roof, and he is actually positioned right above a hunter. He is also standing very close to the edge of that roof, and it would certainly be a shame if he was to fall down for some reason. And conveniently enough, that is exactly what we have planned here. And so, while Pharaoh and Big Khan go into hiding behind the car over here, Bormin will loop around to the back of the building. Once he's there, he can then climb up and approach Twitchfinger, and as soon as he's close enough, we can start the fight, and we are doing so with a lovely bass smash. That gets Twitchfinger one level lower, but of course we can do a bit more here. Now, with Bormin's turn exhausted, it is time for yet another Wings of the Sniper Gunslinger combo. And at this point, I have to say, this is probably the most powerful mutation combo in the entire game. You don't know who you're missing. What do you think about that? Now, at this point, Twitchfinger is stunned, so we only have to worry about the Hunter. And taking them out should not be too difficult a task for Big Khan, even if it means revealing him. And on the next turn then, it's time to finish the fight. These gogs were preparing for a major war. But with who? Don't think it's the Ark. The same threat the Ark's facing. Weaponized plans. All the more reason to find Goran. Let's keep moving. 
And with that brief conversation, the map is now officially cleared. But before we leave, we can take a quick look at this note over here, which shows the standings for a game named Blockchain Massacre, probably what was played in these halls in the earlier days. The ancients were too scared to kill, so they made these machines to kill for them. Bunch of cowards, if you ask me. And with those wise words from Big Khan and the last bit of loot collected, we are now done here for today. The Hall of Electric Coffins has been completely stripped clean, and as such, we can now return back to the Ark. So here we are, home sweet home after an episode that did not actually feature a single pot ghoul. Not sure if you have noticed that, but it looks like the seed of evil has not yet spread through the entirety of the zone. And perhaps we can keep it that way as our search for Goran continues in the next episode. For today, I think we have reached a good point to make the cut, so if you enjoyed the video, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already, grab some merch over on shop.peatcomplete.com or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.